what we're doing is are people natty or are they not? Just, are you ready? I'm ready. Just don't just don't do it on me. Should we do one on him? <laughs> Coach Greg, and I'm here with Eric Janicki, 270 pounds Sasquatch. He's six foot one, ripped muscle. He's making me look small, but what we're doing is, are people natty or are they not? Just, are you ready? I'm ready. Just don't, just don't do it on me. Should we do one on him? <laughs> is he more natural than Mike O'Hearn is the question. I'm more natural than last time. Let's start with Max Taylor. I'm going to say that Max Taylor is not natural not natural and what makes you feel that way i think that just the progression over the years um i think that he like especially when he got on TikTok, there was like a pretty quick progression i think then it kind of stabilized but then now he's doing competitions and there's so much pressure especially as a fitness influencer and i can speak to this when you get into the space of like getting on stage there's so much more pressure for you to look a certain way or to look good because if you show up and you look like garbage people are going to rip you apart so i think just based on that pressure of having to look that way for stage would say to me that maybe he did something leading up to the show and got off of it in time to do a natural competition and so what i saw when i first saw max taylor i thought this guy's natural then i saw him prepare for the competition i thought Mm, I'm getting a little bit suspicious. I watched him do the, the the first show he did, and I thought, hmm, he wasn't looking as good as he as as I expected him to. But then I saw him do the next show, which is a natural show, and I know he passed the polygraph test, but he's actually getting his blood work done. And so I personally think he's natural, although it's suspicious. He looks that good that he might not be natural. And so I think the final conclusion is going to happen once we actually see the blood work. And so the blood work, it's not going to lie. We're going to see the numbers. And if it comes back looking clean, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to say this to me is natural blood work or this is not. I think the thing too, I'd like to see is if he has it, how much weight he lost in his prep, because that to me is very indicative. Let's say he started his prep at 205. And then he was like 196 peeled like that change should have been much more robust because you're not only losing just body fat, you're never going to lose a little lean tissue. And also there's going to be some fluid that flushes out. Once you start to drop the carbs, you start to get down in those calorie deficits. You're inevitably going to flush a lot of water weight. So if none of that happened and he stayed pretty close to where he started his cut to towards the end, that to me is personally sus suspicious because when I cut for a show, I'll lose like over 30 pounds because it's not all muscle or fat, but there's a lot of water retention uh, that also flushes out, especially towards that last like few weeks of prep. That's a good point. If a guy looks like he's holding his weight close to where it was at the start of the diet, this is absolutely impossible to do that natural. Now, I know he was in the 190s. He got down to about 173. So it could be possible. I guess stay tuned. It's a maybe at this point. Maybe. Next up, the most controversial of this group, I do think, Shizzy. Zero percent. Zero percent. And so, Coach Greg, I have it at 99%. I give him a chance that he's natural. And his coach and all these other gurus are arguing, oh, we looked at the blood work. but And it's explained in this way. Your AST is high. Oh, that's just from hard training. Couldn't have been from taking SARMs. And, oh, we'll leave out the cholesterol and let's not show the testosterone on this test. We'll show it later. And Coach Greg doesn't know what he's talking about. But do I really? And so we've analyzed his physique. We've seen how he looks. I think, I think for me, it's the, the data points, the height versus weight versus body fat percentage. Like it's just, he'd be such an outlier genetically if he were at his age to be, what is he? Six, two, two, six three, foot three or four. Is, he's, oh yeah. At the two thirty range. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of muscle mass to be holding. Um, and he's even admitted that there's been times where he's like more consistent, less consistent to be at that type of body weight with that much lean tissue you'd have to like literally have all your boxes checked all the time you're not taking months off you're not taking time off from the gym or from eating well like that to me just the just from a statistical standpoint it's such a low probability that he's able to hold that much tissue naturally i mean for me for example before i got on anything i was ripped at just under six foot one 178 180 182 and at that point everybody thought holy crap like this guy is 
hundred percent enhanced, but I wasn't, I hadn't even like taken a SARM, no, you know, anything. And, but that to me shows like me being six, one peeled at one eighty. this guy's kind of lean at two thirty, only two inches more than me. Uh, I just think it's just, he'd be such a, like just a statistical outlier for me to believe that. It reminds me of Mike Thurston. Mike Thurston has examined his physique throughout the years and he's bigger at some points and a bit leaner and a bit softer and it kind of goes up and down. And his own physique was like that. It was kind of up and down. And as of late in the last year, he looks so much better in the last year. And you got to remember, he's like 27. You don't suddenly put on a lot of muscle at 27 if you've been training fairly consistently throughout your life. And so why is it that suddenly he looks so much better? And to, to me, it seems obvious they took something. Next, Alex Eubank. I, I think that Alex, I'm actually going to give it to him for right now. Natural, this most recent video Greg did where he showed his blood work and the testosterone had rebounded so dramatically. And he's talking about how he's eating more and he's like, you can see how much he's sizing up. That to me, like, looks like clomiphene in terms of like getting his levels back to where they need to be. And I think people would, some people would argue, like, oh, that's still natural, but it's, it's not. Uh, if you guys know what clomiphene is, it's a natural, it, it enhances your natural levels of testosterone production. The drug is banned by WADA. Is, and so you, can. you can't use it in sporting competition. Everyone's going to be writing in. What the heck is, is Alex on that got his test levels from 200 and something to 900 and something? And if it was natural, well, he'd be natural, but it's it's not a natural compound. And so to me, if you take something that's banned by WADA, then that makes you not natural. And I think too, there's like this also conception that if you go to a clinic and you have a doctor prescribe something that you're still natural because then you're doing something that the doctor's telling you to do to be healthy. Um, so if they tell you, hey, you need clomiphene to re-spur your natural production, I think there there's like a way to legitimize it in your head that you're like, oh, well, that's not, it doesn't mean I'm not natural. The doctor tells me like, I need this to get my natural levels back to where they need to be. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. I think Alex up to the, like maybe up to this most recent, like two to three month period was natural. And, but like Greg's done videos on like the body dysmorphia feeling, he's always talking about how small he feels about how like, you know, mid his physique is, how bad his physique is. And I think all of those indicators are leading to wanting to do something that's going to maybe help him feel like he can get to that next level. Um, and I think just that psychological game was getting to him at that point. Yeah. And so I had, I had the same theory as him with in clomiphene. I said, I said in the past, I think he took MK677 or something, but then he was natural for a while. And then I think he got onto something. And there's no proof. This is just what we think. And remember, I don't hate on any of these guys for doing whatever they want to do. I don't care if someone technically is natural or not. I just want to tell people what I think. And if it's more than a 51% chance that they're not natural, I say, I don't think they're natural. It doesn't mean I have proof. It doesn't mean I'm saying that it's impossible. I think it's 99%. So obviously it's still possible. But let's go to somebody that is probably not a real human being. He's probably an alien. Michael Hearn. Is it possible that Michael Hearn's natural? Michael Hearn in that video, he said he was 290 pounds. Is he really 290? Like, is he lying about that? Like, what do you, th do you think Michael Hearn is 290? He said he was 290. He's 270. Do you really think Michael Hearn is bigger than this guy? Like at 50 something natural? Yeah, I think, I think once you get so dug in, it's like a Ulysses or Simeon Panda. I think that these guys, and I get it. Because people look at me and they're just like, oh, it's just steroids where there's so much more to it, right? It's like the training, the sleep, the recovery, the supplementation, the consistency, the training intensity is the 90%, right? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that like my physique would look like this if I was 100% natural and I did all those other things. No, it's an accelerant. It is a performance enhancing drug. It's not a performance replacing drug. So I think even if Michael Hearn's on TRT and maybe a little bit of HGH, I think that's maybe possible. Maybe the toss. I think early in his career, there was definitely some serious steroid use, but I think now he gets upset because he wants people to take him seriously. And he wants people to look at him and say, Oh, Mike looks like that. Cause he, you know, he goes in the gym and incline presses four or five, which he does. He's such an impressive human being in the sense that he's so consistent. He, this guy, I can tell you, he does not miss a meal. He does not sleep less than eight hours. Like this guy takes his shit 
seriously. So I think that there's this whole thing of like, oh, if people know that I'm on even a little bit of something, it's going to delegitimize all my hard work. And so I feel bad for the guy because he's just so like, he can't, he can't back out now. He's so dug in that if he were like everything would come true. It's kind of like liver King. Like he built his whole thing on like primal. You don't need fucking steroids. The testosterone's low because you are not eating liver and raw organ meat. And then that whole thing came crashing down when they found out he was on test, you know, growth, age, hormone, growth hormone, 10 IUs or yeah. so. Deca. It was a so, crazy cycle. It was crazy. So I think that's my thing with. Do you know that the liver king has stated that since then he's gone natural? Since that whole debacle, he which says, is, I'm now 100% natural. Which is a joke. I think he upped the doses. I think so. He looks crazier now. Yes. I, I think so. I mean, I think once you've, once you've broken that seal and then now he's like, he's probably not going to go get, te- like, no, he's going to test him because now he's. He's already been outed. So it's like, yeah. might as well double down at this point. And guys like The Rock, do you think The Rock's natural? He's not even on the list, but like, what do you think about The Rock? <laughs> I know. There's it's like, no it's way. a joke to even think it's possible. Like, it's just as silly to think that The Rock is natural as Michael Hearn. I think it's just, I think, like I said, it is that people, a lot of these guys, even like in their head, which I get, if they're on like a lower dose and they're maybe within physiological ranges. So when I mean, when I say physiological ranges, I'm talking like maybe a thousand, 1100, 1200 testosterone, which is artificially bumped by TRT dose testosterone usage. But they, in their head, they're like, well, I'm still within physiological ranges. So why would I out myself and delegitimize all my hard work and tell people I'm on something? Cause then they're just going to take it to the nth degree and just say, oh, there's, he's on everything in the book, which I understand because there are levels to this, right? There's TRT and then there's like, you know, mid-level use. And then there's like abusive use of steroids, which the abusive use, yes, you can like go from zero to a hundred real quick. Like you can be, you know, 18 years old. And then by the time you're 21, you could be 70 pounds bigger, 70 pounds bigger and look 10 years older and look 10 years older. So I think there are levels to it. So I think but everybody, once you've broken the seal, you're like, oh, they're not natural. They might as well be on the amount that Big Remy is on. And like that's I, – I think also that's not fair. All right. Switching gears to someone a little bit shorter, young guy, Tristan Lee. I've done two nattier nuts on him. And in one, I said he was natural. And one, I said he was enhanced. So I want to see what, – what do you think about this guy? I actually just worked out with Tristan in Vegas and – I don't want to be biased. Uh, I did. I mean, he's such a nice guy. Whatever you say, I biased think, or not. I, I think natural. And the reason is for the exact opposite of Shizzy in the sense of we're, if we're talking about statistical probability at his height and his weight. He's not a big guy. Like when he's bulking, he's like 150. When he's peeled, he's like 117 to 120. Like dude is not heavy so when I you think, see him in person he's smaller than you expect am I course. right and when you see his photos he looks way better than they are I think like, I think I think he's like he definitely is like figured out lighting and all that stuff and does a really good job I think he's also like has really great structure for bodybuilding even though he's small like small waist structure um, good hamstring drop good insertion good muscle bellies things you can't really teach so like if he's light, but like kind of like Greg, like Greg looks amazing at his body weight, but he also has, you know, top 5% bodybuilding genetics. That's why he was able to go IPB pro at what, yeah. what weight? 193 or so? Like I would look like You'd a be pile skinny. of garbage. You'd at be small even for men's physique at that yeah, weight now. I'd be, I would literally get yeah. laughed off the stage in men's physique at 193. So I think that there's something to be said for like how good you look at different body weights. And he has that structure, small waist good insertions, nice muscle bellies where he looks good, even though at a low scale weight. So I think that I would be, I'd be surprised if he, if he was enhanced and if it was, it'd be, I think something super minor. Um, or maybe he did clomiphene in the past since he crashed his testosterone in the past with like the severe dieting. But I I think it all, I did think, I do think that his severe dieting and his teens really hampered his height because his bro- I met his brother too. His brother's a little bigger and a little taller. And I think that was that's some people argued he might have been on growth hormone to increase his height. I don't even want to talk about that. But my theory was he was natural when he was young, so lean, so much pressure in social media. I think the temptation to want to take something because all your friends imagine he's meeting all these freaks of the, around the world, the biggest guys. It had to be tempting to see what his body could do. And the fact he was at 4.4% body fat, like, 
unbelievably lean. I think his testosterone levels would have had to been crashed, almost impossible of muscle. And so I think my personal opinion was he started natural, took something, and I don't know what it is, maybe just a small cycle or a SARM, whatever, improved him a little bit, allowed him to stay ripped all the time, give him that energy, then said, this is not the want, the life I want. And then he went natural. And I think he's natural now. And I think he regrets having a carnivore diet, doing 20 to 30,000 steps a day, training that much, only getting four hours sleep. I think that it developed body dysmorphia for him. He got caught up in it. And I think he's trying to be a lot healthier now. And I think he's doing a great job of it. And so I would say natural now, you clearly think natural now. I think natural. Perhaps he used something in the past. We don't really know, but it doesn't matter. But you know, if you're young and you feel pressure to take something, just try to look at Tristan Lee, look at his story and think, is it really worth it? Next up, it's Sam Sulik. And I think we're both going to say he's nat uh, natural for sure. He's natural for <laughs> sure. I mean, this is obvious as Michael Hearn. I, I was going to say, I think that the question is, is he on abusive doses that's going to shorten his life? Like, is he on all of the shit? Is he on insulin, growth hormone test, trend, everything? Or is he on moderate cycles, saving himself for later? Because as a young man, not that you should take this, but you obviously would want to start on a lower dose and titrate upwards as you get older. Do you think he's abusing now? Or do you think he's like on small doses and saving it for later? I think that Sam is full send. I, I like to call him like full send Sam, full send Sam because he is a very intelligent human being, but he also, that is being superseded by his just desire to grow. Um, like as if, Cause like he knows, I think deep down he knows when he goes and trains with that type of intensity, like risk of injury is higher. Right. But he's like, I love training like this. I don't want to train another way. So like he's a smart guy and he understands like, let's say the risks of training like that. I think what really tipped me was like seeing that full day of eating video. It's like, <laughs> it's just the extremes, right? It's, and I don't know if he's doing it for the camera or this is really like the way he eats, but the whole gallon, gallons of milk a day, we had a full, like half gallon of chocolate milk to start the day. I'm sure you guys all saw the video, but to me, that tells me there's a little bit of reckless abandon when it comes to like kind of size at all costs. Like you see this guy's like GI is terrible. He's burping. I watched a few of his videos the whole time. <clears throat> like i mean you can tell like he's just like his gi is not where it needs to be but it's just like at this point for him it's like this growth at all costs and i think that is causing him and i think there is even talk of uh fuad having sitting him down and saying hey man like you got to chill out on the pd usage the way you're eating the way you're training because it's fun now but when you're 26 28 31 40s, 50, if you make it that far, knock on wood, don't want to wish any badly on anybody, but it's going to catch up to you. And I think that a lot of these kids that are watching need to take note of that because what they see is the fame. They see from zero to like 600,000 subscribers and hundreds of thousands of video views on every single video. They see the ma massive growth. They see him staying relatively lean as he bulks. They see him, you know, breaking down his movement patterns and really that organic and they they adore that so i think it's just a matter of like really being careful understanding what he's doing um is not a safe long-term uh, solution i have to say that was a great answer i don't want to add anything to that. i agree with every single point that he's made so i think we both have the same opinion on this guy we we caution him to maybe be careful and to try to live a long life because it seems like it's obvious that it's on abusive doses right now and you got to be careful you got you got to live a longer and you got to live longer than last time. Got to live longer. It's than not last looking time. good right now. I think he should be a lot healthier. I really hope that that eating video was a joke. I, like I think he, like you said, he's very smart. I think he might have planned guy. it. I mean, think about it like this. I told I was texting Greg about this. Think about if he did that video with Fuad and meal one was like oats and eggs and egg whites. Meal two was like white rice and chicken. Pre workout meal was like a banana and some peanut butter. It would have been like the most boring video ever. People would have watched it because of Sam Solik. But they would have been like, oh, this is like, and he leads like every other boring ass bodybuilder. But the fact he like opened up the video and he's like, yeah, it's 11 a.m. I haven't eaten anything. Just grabs a freaking carton in the grocery store with four paying for it and chugs down. Obviously, they paid for it eventually, but chugs down a whole like half gallon of chocolate milk to start his day. Like, 
that's a banger of a video. Like that's yeah. going to get your, that's going to get Greg talking about it. Like you wouldn't have talked about the video if he had eaten 4,200 clean It wouldn't calories. have gotten the clicks. It wouldn't have got number four on trending for Fuad's channel. And so I'm like, man, this is maybe a one-off day. Like I'm going to have a was, crazy cheat day. I think his, I think he like thinks like that. I, I don't think that he was disingenuous in the fact that he, with his principles, he's like, I need to eat 5,200 calories and I need to get X amount of protein. The rest of it is calories. Um, I don't care if it comes from dietary fats or carbohydrates or the quality of said food. I think that he lives by that principle. I think that probably most of the time when he's home and has more control of his nutrition, I think he probably eats more of the stuff that we're used to. Cream of rice, oatmeal, rice, sweet potatoes, maybe a cheap, like one off plan meal every day, maybe goes out and has something. But I think he was like unprepared that day. He didn't feel like cooking. And he was just like, I'm going to get my macros and I'm going to show you how you can do it super easily without trying at all. You don't have to prep a single thing. You can buy cereal and chocolate milk and then go to get a hamburger afterwards and get uh, like, you know, you know, intra workout carbs. I think, I think to your point, I think he is running insulin because that like that whole like intra workout carb pre workout and then a ton of like maltodextrin uh, post workout that's indicative to me of yeah. Uh, why would you add all those extra carbs like a hundred extra grams of carbs around your workout when you just ate? You have all those. He had like how much four hundred grams of carbs before even getting in. Well, that's telling me is you have he really to, he's having to cover off his insulin usage. Is, yeah, is, is, is uh is for anybody. And so imagine you're twenty one and you're already on insulin. Like you need to have something to go to. Like if you have if you're on every drug you can use at twenty one, what are you gonna add at 25. Exactly. You're not going to gain any more weight. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Eric and Janicki, you can find them on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Please go and give them a follow. Check them out. Add in the comments. Very intelligent guy. You can learn a ton from this guy and look at his physique. 270 pounds of muscle. Crazy. And so don't forget to go and spend all your money to make me richer than last time. Buy everything. I want new vehicles I want to buy. And so <laughs> until next time, we are out.